This is Kate. This is Nicole. And this is... One moment, please. Good morning, Nicole. How are you doing today? I am so good. How are you? Mm, You lie. You tired. (laughs) Girl, you know I am. I'm always tired. (laughs) Same, same. Um, Was your weekend okay though with uh, events? It was good, yes. I had one wedding and uh, it was on the beach, but I never got to see the beach, which is just like, it does, does it get worse than that? I don't know. It's, it was so painful. I was so excited. I was like, oh yes, I'm going to capture this awesome content of the beach and the waves crashing in. It's perfect weather. Got zero content of the beach. So. (laughs) Okay. Well, I'm sorry, everybody. You totally just heard that car speed by, and I apologize. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, that's the, I guess, bad part of having an office in the city. But yeah. anyways, um, today we're going to just go ahead and dive in. Um, we're talking about contracts today, which we've had a lot of questions about. And I'm excited to answer, hopefully, most of those today. This yeah. is probably going to be a shorter podcast, so stick with us through this one. It's going to be full of tiny nuggets that you absolutely just go ahead, get your phone out, get ready to type them. Or if you are like me and Nicole, get you a notepad (laughs) out. Sticky notes all over the place. (laughs) Yeah. Here's the thing about, here's the thing about contracts. I, I always get so nervous talking about them because it is so, so Pacific. (laughs) It is so specific to you, your business, your lawyer, we're not lawyers and we're not ever going to claim to be lawyers and we're not going to be giving you legal advice because we're not lawyers. And the best thing you can absolutely do is hire a lawyer to review your contract, help you write it, um, help you put it together. Uh, that's going to be your best your best bet. With all of that said, we're going to kind of today just share nuggets from our contract that we've figured out and that we found to be helpful and hopeful in hopes that it helps you guys in some way. Also, our contracts are created by lawyers, um, but that doesn't mean that it could work for you. Also, Nicole and I have both amended our contracts based on experiences Mm -hmm. that we have had that our lawyers didn't know we had kind of as we've grown. So yes, it's probably time for us to get them re-looked at. For sure. However, basically what we have, they, it would cover our butts in court. Um, but always, always, always speak to your lawyer before having a contract live and using it just in case. Yeah. So also, basically- every lawyer is different. I will, Like every lawyer is different. So For sure. Yeah. And it's going to depend on your state too. And like, and your country even. So it it's all such, there's so many variables. So please just take this as like information and a chat between Kate and I about what we use and what we think would be helpful or things to consider whenever you're going to start or set up your contract. Yeah. Today we kind of have like four main things, main elements on reasons why to have a contract to protect yourself and your business. And we're going to go over those and elaborate a little bit on each kind of topic. Okay, Nicole. So let's just ask the question, why do you have a contract? Yes. Well, it's important to have a contract because it establishes clear expectations. And that goes into a lot of different things. And I'll kind of just share some of the first, the very first things that pop up on my contract are going to be very simple. It's location. And delivery. So where are you setting up your booth and when and what time? Those very, like very, very simple things are really kind of like the very most important things on your contract. And they should kind of be at the top of your contract. For most contracts, that's what it's going to be. It kind of sounds silly that you actually have to write that in a contract. (laughs) But if it's not there, it, it can get you in trouble, especially when you know, let's just say you have a client that won't communicate with you very well. You can always go back to their contract and say, okay, at least I know the location. Mm -hmm. At least I know what time they're wanting me. Yeah. And I always make people include a phone number or an email because I need to get in contact with them somehow. Um, If they have a planner or something like that, I always ask for their name and email as well. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. 
Yeah, so that first kind of section is going to be location, time, um, and even the kind of service that you're going to be providing. So it'll be, okay, is it prints? Is it only digital? Is it um, a drop-off? Is it what what kind of package are you providing your client? Um, and then further down, it'll be what is the cost associated with that package? So all of those really, really important details are going to be kind of at the very top or should be at the very top of your contract. One thing that I do find that happens with me, especially with brides, because they plan so far in advance, when they're in this booking process, in in this contract signing process, they don't know exact times. So they know they want you for three hours, four hours, whatever, but they don't know the exact times. And so what I'll do for this portion, I'll either, we'll either write like to be determined, TBD in the time slot, or... Um, we'll put a time and then we'll go back and amend the contract and have everyone sign the contract again when we do know the very specific times. We are the exact same way. Yeah, it's super helpful, especially if something were to come up on the day and and having that time, having that specific time will really kind of save your butt. If you show up and you're contracted from 11 to 2 and you're there at 11 to 2, but maybe... The party didn't get started until 12. Well, the contract is 11 to 2. That's your contracted time. And so, yeah, it's it is, And it's also hard, I will say, like a tiny caveat, it is hard sometimes to uphold that contract because you, quote, feel bad. Yeah. Um, Like you feel guilty, which is silly. Like once you calm down and think about it, why do you feel guilty? But that's a whole other thing. Another thing is um, it should include kind of, what your retainer is and if, um, and using that correct verbiage to retainer versus deposit, I'll I'll have a video, I'll link it in the show notes that I kind of talk a little bit more about that, but saying the exact retainer amount and even the payment terms and when those payments are due, and that also for sure needs to be in your contract. Yes. Especially like Nicole said, try to have that in the very beginning because a lot of people you will find do not Mm. fully read your contract. So the best place to just pack all of the information that they really need to know is the beginning. Um, If you remember from last week when we talk about first folds in a website, it does carry over to the contract as well. If they have to scroll, they're kind of done. Mm -hmm. So try to have all of your information in that first fold. Yeah, that's very good. I love that tip. It's also really is helpful for you um, when those expectations are not met. So say say a client doesn't pay on time. Well, at least you have this contract now that is signed from them that you can refer back to and say, whoops, looks like you haven't paid. It's in our contract. Um, I would love to hear, Kate, have you ever had to reach out to a client about getting abiding by this this contract yes yeah. all the time I, did, I know that's terrible i shouldn't say all the time okay so in my contract specifically it does outline the retainer when that's due how much that is but then it follows up with your remaining balance is due on x you know blah 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 yeah. um i know a lot of people collect it either two weeks or a month in advance i make my clients pay eight business days before their event and if it says if they do not pay my contract with them is void and I do not have to give a retainer back. Mm-hmm. I have never had to actually like go through with voiding the entire contract. Yeah. Um, however, I have had to screenshot that portion and send it to them. And I know that like it's very intimidating. But yes, I, I definitely have had to say, hey, this wasn't pay- this wasn't paid on time. This needs to be paid within X date. Otherwise, I will you know, move forward with the contract, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, it's worded much nicer, but yes, have it in there. So you, it has teeth behind it mm-hmm. and that you can use it when needed. I unfortunately had one circumstance where um, the client didn't pay uh, and I did not have full payment 24 hours before the event. And I had to tell her, I'm like, listen, like I, 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 I extended it and extended it and like was super lenient. And this was like, this is, this is a, you know, when you give a mouse a cookie kind of situation, I was like, I was far too lenient. And this was a huge learning lesson for me early on, but I'm like, yeah, I, I was like, I, I had to tell, I was like, I am so sorry. Like if we do not get payment within the next like two hours, this con this, I have to avoid this. I can't commit to this. And, and so did you have to avoid it? Well, she paid. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those things. It's like, if you, 
there is certain circumstances where like being lenient is absolutely like it's it's your client, it's your contract, like you are the judge of that. Um, but having a contract in place really is kind of helpful for you. If you feel uncomfortable setting boundaries, then you at least have this to be like, well, it's in the contract that was signed and it makes it a little bit more, not all on you personally, but on the contract. That makes sense. So all of that to say, yes, you absolutely need a contract in order to perform your services and protect your business and yourself. Exactly. Um, I, I think we do want to dive in a little bit about what each of our contracts mention mm-hmm. so you can build your contract. I do want to say too, like another thing, like beyond, you know, when I, when I mentioned it's like, there's four things, like it establishes clear ex- expectations. It protects your business and protects you. It, bre- it provides clarity on pricing. And then it also helps build trust and shows that you're professional. I would for sure say if I was a vendor And say I was a bride and I was hiring people and they didn't have a contract, I would have a really big red flag because the contract not only like protects you as a business, it also like gives the bride confidence that she is going to receive or the client, like they're going to receive what they paid for without it. There's such a toss up, like, like you could take their money and run. Exactly. And so having a contract in place really is like this beautiful legal bonding moment. Exactly. It protects you. It protects them. Everyone's happy. So I think we're going to scroll through our contracts and kind of pick little nuggets that we want to share with you guys. It's, it's going to vary. Like, like we said before, it's going to vary completely depending on who you are, your business, what you offer. Um, and, and so don't take this word for word. This is just kind of sharing our experience. Also like to note, this is what we do. And so this is super photo booth oriented. If you're a photographer and you also do this and you kind of add it into your photographer contract, it's going to look completely different. If you're a DJ and you add photo booth services, at, like you're also, it's going to look completely different. As a photographer, I do have a photo booth separate one, actually. That you have them both sign? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yes. That's cool. Like, and I know a lot of people don't do that, but that is because... I'm not going to be operating the photo booth. Yeah. Someone from my team is going to be operating the photo booth. So it made me feel more comfortable to separate it. Yeah. Just going to put that out there. But you can build them into each other. Yeah. So make just keep that in mind while you are listening to this. This is photo booth specific mm-hmm. verbiage. Yeah. So um, kind of right under retainer, refund, cost, um, we have – I have photo booth operations. So I kind of outline – The expectation. So for photo booth operations, I say like my photo booth is going to be operating at X amount percentage of time. I do want to like cover myself in the event that there are technical difficulties or something happens or I have to change out the photo booth printer paper. Um, It covers me so that I the client isn't expecting like 100% of the time the food, the booth, the food. 100% of the time, the photo booth is going to be operational. That's the goal. But to cover myself, I say, you know, this amount of time is what we can for sure say and and tell you that we're going to be operational with the exception that there's going to be times where we make adjustments to the lighting or have to change out batteries or printer paper or whatever. It kind of gives that allowance. Do you have that in yours? Yeah. I do have that in mind, um, and it's pretty much the exact same thing. It says, in order to perform necessary maintenance on the photo mm-hmm. booth. So you can change that wording, um, but that basically covers everything. Like Nicole said, changing batteries, changing light, changing the printer paper. You, w- If you print, you will have to change the printer paper. If you don't know how to do it, it's going to take you a hot second. Exactly. Even if you know how to do it, it still takes you a hot second. Yeah. And you want to give yourself that allowance to have that a little bit breathing space in time. Like I had power completely go out one time. And the the last thing I would want is for my client to say, well, look, you were out for 10 minutes. So I would like that 10 minutes refunded. You know, like we, we have that allowance so that should there be things beyond our control, we have that little bit of breathing room. And then, um, next up, I, can I say what I have on mine? Go for it. Okay. So I just have like the access space and power. Mm -hmm. Um, I love having a layout if it's a couple, like a bride or groom, or even if it's a corporate person, I like having the layout 
at least a week to two weeks before. Um, I do have it in my contract that you have to provide one. Yeah. Do I get one every time? No. <laughs> um, but I do get it most of the time because it's, you know, people read it, but I also have in there that I need an X amount of space. I require, you know, an, an eight by eight foot space. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I need at least one three prong outlet. Yeah. Our photo booths run on electricity. Mm-hmm. I have to have that. And you have to have it within a certain distance, like depending on how long here your cord is, like consider that as well. And then you might even need more than one. If you have your printer set up, your booth, additional lighting that has to be plugged in, like you do have to consider, okay, you may need two outlets. You might need more than that. You might, you, you're going to need double that space for your 360. So if you have a 360, oh, absolutely. you also need to have that outlined like, oh, okay, I'm going to need this much space. Yep. And I do, I do have that in my 360 as we need and a much larger space than that for the 360. However, the cool thing about our 360 is we don't require power because it is battery. That is so cool. So that's. That is a different thing. Um, I mean, you we can dive so much into this because I also say like with setup, like I have to have an elevator. Like I'm not going to lug this stuff upstairs. And if I do have to lug it up, like there have to be accommodations. Um, has that been held up? No. <laughs> I didn't know you had that. That is interesting. I love that. I know a lot of people. Yeah, because I know a lot of people have that because if especially for mirror booths, those things weigh so much. I could not imagine like if I had to climb three flights of stairs with no, mm -mm, no, you need to give me an elevator access. I can't imagine like, how would I even get a 360 booth upstairs? You You had to have an elevator. Like I'm thinking about that. Yeah. And even with an elevator, now that I think about it, like with our size of 360 booth, like I don't even know if it would fit in an elevator. So that's something for me to consider yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. Great talk. Yeah. No. We're um, learning so of, much. Lots of good things for us. Well, and also you should also like highlight to what time you need to be able to set up because sometimes the, the venue may not be open when you need to be set up. And so this also protects you on setting expectations on when you're going to arrive, when you're going to leave, how much time you need to set up, how much time it takes to tear down, et cetera. Do you... Can you share with us how much time you put in your contract to allow for setup? I say two hours. And okay, me yeah, too. There's a lot. I would love to talk about this probably on a different time, but there's a lot that goes into setup that is even beyond just setup because I want to allow myself time to troubleshoot. Um, it's very, it's very possible that I'm training my team during that time, like and showing them in depth, like how things work. If I have issues with if my stand breaks, like I need time to like allow for things to happen. And then I also want time to be able to capture like behind the scenes footage. I was going to say a lot of clients don't understand like whenever they do read the contract, why do you need two hours for setup? And then I have to explain, you know, we, we take this yeah. very seriously. I am not setting up the booth and walking out. I'm setting up the booth. I am uh, testing my prints. I'm going to test lighting. I'm going to test the Wi-Fi. Like everything is going to be tested mm-hmm. before the event starts. And then when the event starts, I'm going to come a little bit early and retest yeah, everything exactly. again because my anxiety can't <laughs> handle it. Exactly. Yeah. And then um, I also have one. I don't I don't know if you have this, but about parking, um, especially, and you probably don't have this, but especially like big cities, Miami, Orlando, like really, really big cities, um, you're probably going to have to pay for some sort of parking or your parking won't be close or anything like that. And that's a very important thing to consider is I don't want to have to pay for my parking. If it's like $20 for X amount of hours, that should be the client's responsibility. And so outlining, um, how, how parking is going to be provided. If it's, it needs to be close, it needs to be paid for in advance or a take, uh, you know, a tag needs to be given to you beforehand or something like that. So have you ever had anything bad happen with parking that you have been like, hey, this isn't going to work? I I mean, there was one situation in Miami where it's just downtown. It's just downtown. <laughs> it's just a nightmare downtown and it's impossible to find parking. And so there was nothing close by. And so it was like, you know, the loading, unloading dock area. And I'm like, I'm just going to have to park here and like figure it out after. So I went and set everything up and like crossed my fingers and hoped my car was still there afterwards. <laughs> Girl, I have had to put my hazard lights on, like, and pull over on the, you know, like a parallel yeah. parking street that is busy. And I'm like, you know what? 
my hazards are going on, which I'm sure is illegal. So if you're a cop, just like <laughs> leave me alone real quick. But it, yes, like this is my job. I have X amount mm-hmm. of time to do it. So I'm going to be adding the parking clause to mine because I haven't had to do it often. I usually just pop my yeah. hazards on. There. So all good information. And you are from a larger area than I am. So that's also something that you should Mm -hmm, consider. Absolutely. And um, one thing that's happened too, which is why it's so good to have like that extra time beforehand is think about if you have to find parking or if it's in a brand new venue that you've never been to before. And like, I've had this happen where I've had to circle the block multiple times because there was no parking. And I'm like, I was so glad that I had that extra time and that little bit of a buffer. Because sometimes I will, like hour and a half is like, my perfect timing for setting up. And so having that little bit of a buffer of that 30 minutes to find parking, if I have to walk the gear around the block and more, um, all of that, if, if you have to make multiple trips, you have to consider that, like there's just so much. So definitely give yourself some time in your contract and educate your client that you will need extra time. It's not just popping your photo booth up yeah. and walking out. Yeah. So another thing that's really important to consider, and we will, I'll try not, I'll try to keep it brief is making sure that wherever you're located is going to be protected from weather, um, from all the other kind of circumstances to, to get the best photo quality too. Like you don't want to be in full bright sun. You're not going to get good photos. Like it's just, it's just not going to work. (laughs) Especially if you are using an iPad photo. So cover, um, are you protected from wind? Like I've had horrible circumstances, unfortunately, where, um, wind was a factor. My, my backdrop blew down my, my lights crashed. Like it was just really, really terrible and dangerous. So make sure, which is probably why we add that to our <laughs> Absolutely. Now. Yeah. And then having Wi-Fi access, like having a clause that like says that there has to be Wi-Fi at your venue. And if it if there is no Wi-Fi, then you can't guarantee immediate delivery of your photos if you're doing a digital photo booth. Like protect yourself in that way too. And we do also, Nicole and I both mm-hmm. have hotspots um, to cover us in case the Wi-Fi isn't good. However, if you're in an area that doesn't have good service to begin with. Your hotspot's not going to work all the time. So having Wi-Fi access in your contract is 100% necessary. That's something that I learned today um, while talking to Nicole because I don't have Wi-Fi access in my contract specifically because we've always just used our, mm-hmm. our hotspots. Yeah. So, And then I also have like um, what happens if there's damage. Um, I kind of outline a little bit of those details. I also have um, about printing. Like what, what does it mean when you add printing? Does it include everyone in the photo? Does it include unlimited prints? What does unlimited mean? <laughs> yes. And, and you do need to define those because when people read on your website, let's say that you are advertising unlimited mm-hmm. prints. What does that mean? And your contract is the perfect place for you to define what that means. Um, I know Nicole, I know you do what you just said. Every person in the photo gets an image. That's what unlimited yeah. means for you, correct? So I, I've tweaked that (laughs) because I, I used to say unlimited in the beginning and I learned very quickly that that was not good for me (laughs) and that I needed to be very, very clear in outlining what that meant because I was at an event and I had not, not like the, the client who booked me. I had other members and guests of the event say, could I have 10 copies of this photo? And at the time I was like, well, I could say no. Yeah, right? Sure. But then I was like, you know what? Like I say unlimited, so I need to follow up with what I said. And then after that event, I for sure went in and tweaked my wording because. Yes. Um, also, you need to, ident- or, I'm sorry, define another reason for unlimited. After the event, some people can come back and say, hey, we didn't get photos of X or can you print photos of you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, Mm -hmm. No, I can't. In my contract, it says vendor will deliver printed tangible photos at the event. They will not be delivered after the event. So unlimited photos is people in the photo and only available at the event. And if you choose to do it after, you can, but make sure you have like a cost associated, like, because um, I do like a dollar per so if they want to print the entire gallery again and they have 350 photos, it's going to be $350. And I've never had that. I've never had a client come back and request that because they have access to their digital you know, files. 
Um, but and you can print like they could go and print them off somewhere else mm-hmm. if they really wanted to. Um, I don't think Wal I don't know if Walgreens has like a two by six option, but I know other websites do have a two by yeah. six option. I, yeah, I don't know either. That's a that's a really good point. So it's it's yeah, it's important to communicate too with your client. Like, hey, make sure you get the most value out of your your print session. And if you want an extra copy of all of these photos while we're here, I can do that for you. It's this service add on fee, or you know, like if you wanted a memory book, a collection of all the photos, like this is how much it would cost. You know, so. Um, before we are actually, no, I want to go ahead and dive into, um, extra cost. Um, let me, it says conditional charges in my contract. So for conditional charges, we do charge, how would I even say this? Um, a travel fee is what I have it in mine as if, if a location exceeds 60 miles round trip, we do charge a travel fee. So 30 miles from our location. Um, the GSA, I think, is at 0.655 per mile currently. So that's what I charge my clients. I do 0.655 times whatever the round trip mileage is. And they understand that mm-hmm. from the very get-go. That is what they are going to be charged. If you are traveling, please, please charge a travel fee, guys. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. I charge I charge a flat fee and it's like if it's completely beyond where I would normally go. So like every like I said before, like every everyone's situation is completely different. So I travel hours outside of where I currently live, but it's because like I have family there and they help with childcare and so I'm already kind of would make a reason to go visit there and so I wouldn't charge a travel fee. Like I don't mind providing services in those areas without charging additional but if it is above and beyond kind of where i would normally go like for example i would travel to orlando normally it's an hour hour 15 hour and a half depending on where in orlando but um if it's like really really north like sanford or um like even jacksonville or st augustine like those are not in my travel radius area so i would for sure charge a travel fee um and then i would either determine if it would be flat rate or again like just like your um your rate, it would be 0.655 of whatever the mileage would be. Yeah. And you can yeah. charge whatever you want, but that is what the IRA it allows you to deduct. Yeah. That's a whole nother topic. Um, I am going to move on to another conditional charge. Um, I, it says in mind that if the event goes beyond the time that is booked, it is this much money extra per hour. Um, I know a lot of people can do half hours. I don't like that. Uh, do you do half hours, Nicole, or do you do just like so a full I hour? So I do both. I've done both. Um, what All of those are kind of added into my packages beforehand. So I kind of have like an Amazon cart kind of <laughs> set up with my, with my packages and add-ons. I mean, like, yeah, they can add on another hour, half hour. That's fine with me. And then they would just have to pay. I would just adjust it in my HoneyBook CRM and resend them the email and they would have to pay it right then and there. I do have that. Like if they want to add on, it has to be paid right then and there. Okay. I do like that. I'm, I always say they can pay the next day. Well, you're never getting that money. Does that actually work? No, I always do. It works for me. (laughs) Maybe I have really, really nice clients, but. (laughs) I'm always afraid. It's like but, out of sight, out of yeah. mind. Events over. Like there's no guarantee that you're gonna have, like what? It, like if they decide to not pay you, I guess you have it in your contract, so you have that. You have that backup. Yeah. yeah. But I know I understand why that's scary, and even in the moment, it does scare me. Like, oh my gosh, are they really gonna pay? But I've never had someone that's not right. pay. Yeah. Thankfully. All right. What do you want to um, move on to? We can talk about, yeah, I mean, force majeure is for sure important, especially um, in the in this day and age, uh, protecting yourself, protecting your client in the event of natural disaster or shutting down, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, that happened. Um, so all of that. And then failure to perform. What does that mean for you, for your client? What do you have next after we talk? I have talk- feeding the vendor. Oh yeah, <laughs> because I don't have that. So go ahead. Okay, so this is a really random one. Um, I have feeding the vendor in my contract. Yeah, the reason that I have that is because we do work long wedding days. Usually, that's who our ideal client is most of the time. Um, and 
I need for either me or my team to be fed. And a lot of times we do get forgotten. So in my contract, it says, and I'm just going to give you like the verbatim. This is what it says. Should meals be provided to guests as part of the event, meals shall be provided to the vendor and the vendor staff. Meals are to be provided at or near the time that the event attendees are eating. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get food. I've had, I've been at events before where they have not adhered. Is that the right word to that? Mm -hmm. And I have been like, Matt and I were so close to walking out because we were Mm -hmm. there for five hours and it was during dinner time. So I hadn't eaten before because in my contract, it says you will have a a meal for me. Yeah. Some, I have seen some photographers and videographers um, require a hot meal Okay. because for some, sometimes hotels uh, and catering services will provide like a boxed sandwich when they're serving their guests, like a beautiful hot meal. I have had that happen too. So if you want, and you, that's, you know, completely up to you and your preferences, you can also specify that it needs to be a hot meal. Or you um, could also put in there, it needs to be, like you can use different words, but the same meal that is yeah. being given to the guest. Um, I was going to say, can I can I add it in really quick? One time we were at an event and there were vendor meals and this one vendor actually brought their entire family and took all of the meals. Wow. So we didn't have a meal. And thankfully, like it was an incredible planner that we were working with. This this planner is absolutely incredible. They apologized a million times. They didn't know like what had happened and they left. Like they sent one of their like people to help and picked us up anything that we wanted to eat and brought Aww. it back to us. Like that was so kind. The contract was not with them. They did not have to do that. But I just it was a happy moment in the vendor world. Yeah. I I did have that when I first started that I required a meal, but when because I was by myself. Mm -hmm. Um, the meal was tended to be when I had my service time. So they would come up to me and say, okay, your meal's ready. And I'm like, well, (laughs) the photo booth is running. I can't leave now. Um, so I actually just, I started to take it out because I'm like, it's silly. Like I, I can't eat when they're providing the meal. So, um, I decided to take it out, but now that I do have team working for me, it's something that I'm going to be building in. Cause I like, I'll have you know, them eat and it's okay. I'll like watch the booth while they go eat and whatever. We'll take turns or whatever. But um, yeah, something to consider. If you're doing it by yourself, um, consider that like most of the time they're going to be providing the meal during your service time. So either like let them know, like, hey, could you please box it up for me? And then you could wait until after. Granted, it's probably going to be cold and not delicious, but um, yeah, something to consider. I had last weekend, we had a, like the event was one hour and then there was a break because they were going to eat dinner and then the event kept going. So that was the perfect time. And and I told my team, I was like, this is how you do it. This is what you do, et cetera, et cetera. I did have to hound the planner over and over and over to let me know, is there a vendor meal? Because I need to let my team know. Anyways. I mean, we are going off on a whole tangent about <laughs> vendor meals, and that's a little ridiculous. I know. Some people get hangry, and you know they can't function without a without a meal. So it's you know it's an important thing to mention. Um, do you want to talk about safe working environment next? Or... Go for it. Yeah, okay. this is such so this is such a good one. Go ahead, Kate. So a safe working environment. This covers harassment and basically anything that you feel unsafe about. And in my contract, it does define what unsafe working environments are. I mean, it's just like, it, it's kind of, it's, it's such common sense. Like you shouldn't be harassed. No human being should be harassed, but it really kind of outlines what happens if you are. Mm-hmm. Do you want, can I give a very, very quick story of why this is in our contract? Yes, please. Okay. So at one wedding, Um, Matt was working and it got to the point where the people there were very, very drunk. We understand that people are going to be drunk at weddings. It was, um, unsafe because they started knocking over our gear and like, guys, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And the bride and groom at that time, I don't think they want to pay for people 
knocking over the stuff, number one. Number two, they were getting real handsy with Matt, and that made him very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, And he actually did end up having to terminate the service. Um, Thankfully, we had this in there. I have another time where I have a an employee who was getting very uncomfortable because adult people were making very uh, sexualized comments towards her mm-hmm. and um, asking to take pictures with her and touch her. And it was just mm-hmm. a really inappropriate situation. So again, it was covered because we have this, you know, safe working environment clause in our contract. Yeah. And I would say too, if that ever happens, like make sure you're communicating to your planner, your event coordinator, whoever's kind of in charge and making them aware of the situation. Uh, I have like a, like a strike one, strike two, strike three policy Mm -hmm. in mine. Um, Like if this happens one time, like this is what's going to happen two times. This is going to happen at any time we could cancel it. If we're feeling very unsafe or it's become dangerous, like you need to be able to know and be confident that you're protected and you're safe and you're not going to lose out on your money mm-hmm. um, and, and, and make an angry, a client angry. Granted, they can feel however they want to feel, but um, it's covered at least. It's covered at least. And um, yeah. So yeah. Lastly, um, I have, I have a, a whole section on the online gallery, the live gallery. Um, and the reason why is because I, I always want my clients to be super aware that there is going to be a website that is going to have the photos and I'm going to, I'm going to outline exactly how long it's live for. And I'm going to, it also like, I have them, I have them initial it because especially if there's, let me back up. So I allow my clients to choose whether or not to have the live gallery. And I do this because if they are private people then having photos of themselves or their guests or whatever on a website that is shareable by anyone who has the link, um, if they're a private person, they're probably not going to like that. So I make sure I have a whole section on my live gallery if they want it, if they don't want it. Um, and it also kind of outlines I'm not responsible for the sharing of this link. It's live, you know, like your, your guests can take that and blast it all over the internet. I'm not responsible for that. Um, so I do make sure that it's very clear. I don't have that. I like that. Mm-hmm. I also, in the same topic as that, if I know, like I have worked with schools, if they're minors, the live gallery is off just automatically. Off. Absolutely. Anytime it's like, yeah, a child's birthday, anything like that, anything with minors, mm-mm, off. Last mm-hmm. I have a model release. Oh, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. very important. Very, very important. Um, and this allows uh, me to have the um, the rights to the photos taken and the ability to use it for um, promotion, marketing, all of that stuff. I also have a clause in there that allows me to take external videos and photos of clients using the booth or guests using the booth. For social media purposes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't have that in mind. I know we talked about that, but I have like the model release. It's not labeled model release, but I like that you have in there that you're able to take pictures with your phone. Yeah. Um, Cause that would, I mean, I always just say, Hey, can I grab a quick photo? But you know, at the end of the day, that doesn't cover me legally. Like I could yeah. totally get sued if somebody was like, I don't want that on my social media. You know what I mean? So I've only had one client ever say like, I don't like this model release. I want you to take it out. In which case, like, of course, you know, they have the right to do that. And I, I took it out. And so obviously I'm bummed. I'm like, Oh, I can't share any of the contact, but that's not true. I was still able to share a lot of content from, um, that event because I was able to show like the tap to start screen, the backdrop, some of the, the decor within the, um, venue. And I was able to create content still without using actual images of the individuals. So you could still show exactly basically what events you like to work with. So that that's exactly. nice. Yeah. Have you ever really quick had to completely remove parts of your contract and add in new parts of your contract from, let's say, a university? No, tell me. So I worked with a university and they were like, you have no right to any of this content. You cannot post about any of this, none of it. Uh, basically, like I owned nothing from that event. 
which really sucked because obviously you want to share that you're working with the university. That's a really big deal. And like, that makes your heart feel good that a university wants to hire you. Um, we did end up going through with it. It is what it is. They, they were a great client. They've hired us multiple other times, but it still really hurt because I did want to, I did yeah. want to share. I did at the end reach out to the person who hired me and asked, is there any thing that I can share. And mm -hmm. he was super kind and did say, if you can send me which videos or images you want to share, I can let you know if you can. And yeah. which was really nice. And then I got written release. I could use X photo, which that, yeah, which I don't know. It's, so it's a had, strange I, world. Yeah. I had something similar with the air force because they signed my contract as is the bottom release, everything. Um, but then when I went to, I said, Oh, like, can I share? I, I kind of asked for permission after, because I was like, I'm like, surely, even though they had no qualms about my contract, I'm like, surely there are some rules here. And so I asked again, and then it went through this whole compliance thing. And then they told me exactly what I could show. And it couldn't be anything like it couldn't have any images with props or anything kind of silly. It had and anything I showed had to show something that was really professional or like represented the Air Force well, which makes complete sense to me. Um, and then it couldn't be like I they wouldn't allow me. I did take like video guest book entries. Mm -hmm. I asked questions and they responded with answers and I couldn't use any of that content. So. Um, afterwards it was interesting. They came back with all of these requests, which should have really been in the contract phase. Um, but I've, I found that happens. People don't read the contract and they don't look through it before they sign. And then it's real awkward whenever they want to say something to you and you're like, well, well you signed this. Exactly. So, um, there's so, there's so much more in each of our contracts that we could, you know, explain and dive into. And mm -hmm. I think that we really hit some really, really good points that when you're at least building your contract, you should include. Yeah. Um, if you don't agree with it, that's okay. Yeah. It's going to like, again, like we've said this before, it's going to be so different for each individual person. However, there's a lot of points that you really should incorporate to protect yourself. I do want to say this one last thing. If you're doing free events or events for trade, do you still need a contract? 100%. Yes. 100%. <laughs> yes. Please use a contract. Please still have a contract that outlines your service times, the time you're arriving, the time you're ending, and even include how much your package is valued at. Yep. That way you have record, they have record, and it will help you in the future. Should they want to hire you again, you can have that as a reference point. Very, very, very important. I also like protect yourself that you have, that you keep the price in there because I think it's a psychological thing. Like if they yeah. can see how much of a service you're providing, it's not a joke. It's not a free thing anymore. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Kind of what I'm totally. explaining. Like they understand that you are giving them this much price-wise worth of service. Yeah. And I think it also helps communicate the expectations for the future. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot, a lot to talk about. This is a full-on podcast. We thought we were like, oh, we're gonna make a mini one just about contracts. No, this is a full-on podcast. Oh, we could make it longer. Like, oh, I have so much, but there's no way. At the end of this podcast, we hope that you've taken a lot away from what you need in your contracts. And so we do have our contracts that we use for sale in our shop. Nicole and I have both taken our contracts and combined them and made them make sense. Both have been looked over by lawyers, but that does not mean that you should not have yours looked over by a lawyer as well. Um, again, because this is legal in my state. I live in Arkansas. This is legal in her state. She lives in Florida. Every state and every country is different. Mm -hmm. I always tell people use contracts as an outline. Um, yeah. Take and I'll say too, you know, like you, you're able to, if you don't have a lawyer and you don't have any kind of sense of who you should contact, how you should find one, any of that. Um, you could always go to like Fiverr or Upwork and there are lawyers on there who are able to provide like contract reviews. Yes. Um, there's also places like Legal Shield. You pay like a monthly fee and you have access to a team of lawyers. Then they offer free uh, contract review. 
Um, so there's a lot of options to get just the contract reviewed if that's something that you are only interested in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So we hope that this has helped, um, while you're building your contract and we hope that this has also instilled why contracts are so important Mm -hmm. to your business. Um, and I don't know what else to say. We would love to answer questions. Obviously, we're not uh, we're not lawyers, and so we can't answer like legal specific questions on like, oh, should I have this in my contract? I don't know. Ask your lawyer. Um, <laughs> so we we would be happy to answer any kind of general questions or things like that. Um, and we like would love for example, to hear- if you if you want to say like, do you have your photo booth outside? Is that covered in your contract? Nicole and I both have different things in our contracts. Um, yeah. So th- questions like that, we are yeah. very, very happy to answer. Um, and again, I'm going to say it a million times. We're not lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> so I just feel like we really have to cover ourselves. Although these really, like they have, we both paid to have contracts yeah. created by lawyers. It's still, you still need to have your personal lawyer. I'm so them. thankful for my lawyers. Yeah. Especially with like situations with um people stealing content like having please like please have a lawyer like to have that backup that person to tell you like no this is your legal right or like oh this is the next steps you can take like having that that feedback is just so 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 valuable i love my lawyer because i'm able to email him and ask questions and we have built that relationship that he understands my business so he knows like what I'm coming to him with and what mm-hmm. he's gotten himself into as well. So I do think it's important to have a lawyer that you do work with because I don't want to, I don't want to have to build a relationship every single time that I have a question. <laughs> yeah. That's um, true. So I hope this has been has so helpful. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening all the way to the end. I wish I could give you a high five and congratulate you on making it to the end. Um, we, we so appreciate your support here guys. And we, we love having you here. We love being able to do this and share this content for free for you guys so that you can grow and build your photo booth business. And we cannot wait to see you on the next podcast episode. And I would love to know if you like what your guys feedback is um, about maybe. And Nicole, you can cut this out. I would love to know what your guys feedback is about if you wanted to do yeah, something more. Um, you know, candid or like live or like, did you appreciate the live that we did? Like, I want to know your feedback about that because we enjoy so much sharing with you guys what we know, because this wasn't around when we were starting. So Mm -hmm. we just really appreciate whenever you guys do give us feedback and you really do like guys, y'all are killing it in the DMs. (laughs) <laughs> we love it. We love it. Yeah. Like a lot of you have said like, it's really authentic. So like, yeah, we would love to know if you would love a more chit chat type of podcast, like let us know. Um, or if you want to continue it more focused on a topic each and every time. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And this has been one moment, please. We'll see you next time guys. Bye guys. Bye.